Dr. Tom Rohr is a leading voice in the realm of device-based therapy. In this installment of DermTube's AAD meeting coverage, he discusses pearls from his presentation today on non-ablative fractional resurfacing. Yeah, my talk on non-ablative fractionated resurfacing deals with a bunch of infrared lasers, so those wavelengths between, say, 19 or 1,500 nanometers and 2,000 nanometers that are invisible to the eye that have been fractionated, broken up into little um, tinier beams and used to treat all sorts of things. Um, they're primarily designed for treating signs of photoaging for texture and pigment, but also we found work extremely well in treating scars, both acne scars, traumatic scars, surgical scars, and then have also been tried with varied success for treating stretch marks, um, active acne actually, um, and a variety of other things including even vascular lesions. I think that what we've seen over the last five years or so is a real um, increase in the number of different devices and wavelengths that they've been able to fractionate. And with that and the improvement in some of our techniques, I think the take-home message is that we've got great treatment now for scars, better than we've had with, I think, any other technology, and without a lot of downtime with these non-ablative fractionals. We're able to increase collagen production, smooth out the texture of scars, um, and make a big difference. Um, we also have a reasonably good tool for just sort of general photo damage. So I use the non-ablative fractional devices as a first-line therapy for any nuance improvement of the skin off the face for sure, hands, neck area, say, where we couldn't use our blade of lasers, and on the face if they don't want a lot of downtime. If someone doesn't mind a little downtime, then we can use the ablative fractional devices on the face to get not just the improvement of the texture, but a little bit of tightening as well. Because one of the downsides of the non-ablative fractional devices is they don't tighten the skin that much. They improve collagen production, they improve the texture of the skin, they improve the pigment of the skin, but they don't actually tighten it. And some patients are looking for that tightening. So for a single device, we may use the ablative fractionals. Um, the other things that we're using to uh, fractionate would be radio frequency. So we're having radio frequency devices, these bipolar radio frequency devices that send little beams of, instead of light, radio frequency waves into the skin to cause similar histologic damage where they damage a little cone of tissue under the skin, you get inflammation, and you get improvement in the collagen production and skin texture. I think there are a lot of things going on right now with the fractionated devices. We're fractionating different wavelengths. There's some studies that have just come out fractionating a alexandrite wavelength that, that's been typically used for hair removal or tattoos or pigment. And we're using that not just to remove pigmented lesions, but also to improve the texture of the skin. And the healing time from that is really quick. Um, less than 24 hours, the patients are back and running. Um, so I think we'll see more wavelengths being fractionated, more types of energy. Um, in addition to the radio frequency, we'll see other energy sources that have been fractionated. And we're going to see probably a little bit different in terms of technology of the width and the density of these fractionated uh, injuries. So it's exciting. Things are changing and uh, improvements are made almost on a weekly or monthly basis.